All right, everybody, Pat Dennis here with Synaptic Advisory Partners. And I just want to take a couple of minutes to kind of walk through an example of how we could use Field Service Lightning uh, as well as Eureka, both kind of in tandem to address a field service use case, uh, all again, kind of on the Salesforce platform. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of go, go uh, kind of walk us through the use case uh, that we are going to be using today to um, to solve this particular problem. So in this case, we are go we are acting as an appliance manufacturer, and what's happened is that a customer has demonstrated to us, maybe they've called in or submitted a case um, through our community that has said that uh, one of their products is not working. It happens to be a dryer. And so what we're gonna do is, uh, our team is actually creating a work order in the system, and we need to then dispatch that work out to a service technician who's responsible for actually going and fixing that particular appliance. Um, so we're going to go out there, we're going to fix this appliance, and all the while we're going to have a checklist using Eureka to kind of go through and make sure that everything, all the criteria for fixing this thing has been met, and we're going to guide them through their, their um, service engagement all the while, making sure that they have everything they need to get the job done right the first time. So here's kind of what the demo flow looks like. We are going to start inside of Salesforce on the Field Service Lightning Dispatcher Console. Then we're going to dispatch one of these work orders, or service appointments, out to one of our technicians. And then our technicians are going to open up their Field Service mobile application, which is going to let them navigate to the particular job site where this appliance is broken. When they get there, we're going to flip over to the Eureka mobile app, run through the checklist, help them fix the dryer, and then all the while they're going to be able to save this information back to Salesforce, or if we're offline, they would be able to store all this information on their device locally until we get back to connectivity and then it pushes it all back to Salesforce, updating all the reports and dashboards, updating the dispatcher console, the work order, etc. So I'm going to move over into our dispatcher console where we can see a bunch of different service technicians are lined up here. Uh, but the one that I will draw your attention to is me uh, on this individual line right here where we have an upcoming quote unquote appliance repair job uh, that we have actually dispatched out to this technician. Um, and so now the technician is aware, we're aware that the work needs to be done. And uh, I, I've received a push notification on my mobile application that says I need to go out and do this job. So I'm going to go over to my mobile app. And now we can see here, this is the field service mobile application that's provided to us as a result of our field service lightning product. Uh, and so now I'm playing the role of that service technician, right? So I can see where I am. I can see where I need to go for this particular visit here. Uh, so this is going to show me some information about how to navigate there. Um, and when I get, um, I, I guess, you know, what we need to do right now is kind of pretend that we're driving in our truck on the way. But when we get there, that's the key here is now we can open up change the status of the service appointment to in progress. So now we're walking up to the front door, we're shaking this person's hand, we're saying that we're here to actually repair this appliance. Uh, and when we are introduced into maybe the laundry room to, uh, to make this fix happen, this is when we can select complete form. And this is gonna move us over into the Eureka mobile app entire, entirely automatically. It's gonna generate this checklist for us uh, where we can use this to kind of be guided through the repair process. So the first thing that we'll notice about the checklist in front of us is that it's got some basic information about the work order right here in front of us. And it's been pre-populated from the Salesforce data. So it's very easy for us to just reference this information and move on with the job. So in this case, the first question that we'll ask is, you know, what's the preferred contact method for this point of contact? This is a way of us actually just collecting information about these folks in the field so that if with future work orders or future service engagements, we have these preferences already set up in the system. So here we're going to say, you know, do we prefer the phone um, to, to contact them by phone or do they prefer to be contacted by email? So when we select phone, we're presented with a phone number field. When we select email, we're presented with an email field. There's the kind of like the first example of our conditional display logic. And it, once we find out that the phone number actually is wrong, maybe we had it incorrectly marked in our system, we can just make some updates here to that phone number field and that'll get pushed back to Salesforce and we'll update the contact record. So it's kind of like this ongoing effort of making sure that the data is accurate from all of our field service technicians contributing to that. 
So let's go ahead and see if we can just get this job done, right? We'll indicate the date and time of our arrival and we'll verify that it is in fact the dryer that needs to be repaired. So when we do that, what we'll notice here is there's actually a whole new set of questions that have been opened up as a result of uh, us saying that it was a dryer that needs to be repaired. Again, this is an example of that conditional display logic showing and hiding different sets of questions. So we're really staying focused on what uh, responses we're looking for from this service technician in the checklist. So the first thing we're going to ask actually is does the customer own a matching washer? We'll say that they do not and then we'll move on. And then here we'll indicate just the general condition of this dryer. Uh, and here we can actually provide some additional guidance to our service technician, whether or not it's uh, in poor condition or whether or not it's in great condition. Uh, those tooltips are extremely helpful for guiding uh, our individuals um, to select the right data and uh, data points. So now we'll move on. We'll just say, you know, what are the areas that uh, seem to be necessary for repairing it? And so we kind of look over the dryer. We're inspecting it. We say, you know what? It's, it seems to be the heating element that we need to be addressing here. And so this is going to allow us to open up a, uh, to open up a photo, or the, it's going to allow, or it's going to prompt the user to basically take a photo of the heating element. And so what we'll do here is we'll just select a photograph. And when we do, we'll see that we can take a quick image uh, of this particular heating element. We can give it a name or we can use the date and time stamp, and that's what we'll do here. Uh, but then we'll move on, and we'll just answer a couple final questions before actually getting out the tools and getting to work. And the next question is, is the location set up for pro propane or natural gas? We'll say natural gas is the response here, and then we're actually going to move forward with the work uh, ahead of us. So here's a, just another example of us being able to equip our service technicians with all the right tools to get the job done. Here's the full set of instructions for fixing this particular problem uh, and we're giving it right to them. So all they must do is just is just go line by line, make sure that they're uh, following instructions. And what we're doing here, guys, is again, it's not just about uh, standardizing the data entry, but it's about giving them the tools they need to fix the appliance right uh, on the very first time, improving those first time fix rates, improving customer satisfaction, and heck, even improving field technician satisfaction as well. All these things are important, and this is kind of what we're enabling as a result of showing this information. So assuming that the job is done well, we said that we are successful uh, with the repair. We'll indicate the date and time uh, that we finished, and then we'll just indicate some feedback here. So we'll say, you know, if they were happy with the work that was done, we'll indicate that here. We can either type it out or we can dictate it. I'm happy with the work that was completed with this technician. And then we'll quickly grab a signature to say that the job is done. And then we'll quickly, just before we leave, we'll uh, select the View Insights tab right here, which is going to allow us to analyze different pieces of information in this checklist, just in case there's anything that we're forgetting as a technician or anything that we need to know about that maybe we didn't immediately think as we were going through this engagement. So we're sending all this information back to Salesforce, updating reports and dashboards, um, uh, sending off email alerts. All that automation is happening right now, but before we leave, we can just see very easily here uh, that there's a couple different pieces of insight or a couple different insights that were given to us. Number one is uh, a, a discovery was generated and this is just saying that there's a risk of an equipment failure and what this really means is that you know as a result of a combination of different questions in there maybe the fact that uh, you know it was uh, it said we said that there was it was in poor condition and you know we can analyze a couple of different responses here and effectively as a result of those cr uh, criteria being met a discovery is going to be kicked out and provided to our user right here. And this can be really helpful for all sorts of different kinds of reasons. But the second kind of sets of insights here are related to the Einstein um, product that Salesforce offers. We're kind of plugging into that. And so it comes in kind of in two different flavors in this case. The first one is we are analyzing the sentiment of that client feedback. So we're looking at what they had said in that free text and we're able to kind of discern whether or not it's a positive or a negative comment. And then we're also using Einstein vision as a, kind of a bit of image recognition technology here. So in this case, we're, it's recognizing that this is a propane converter that's been installed. But the problem is that this house is set up for natural gas, so that's problematic, right? So these are things that not every technician might be able to pick up on, so we're giving them all the tools that they might need uh, right here with these insights 
to be able to maybe remedy different issues that weren't immediately uh, obvious on, on, on site. So we'll finish things up and just submit the form, save it back to Salesforce, and then immediately we can hop back over into our field service mobile application, indicate that the job is done here by changing our service appointment status, and we'll just say that it's been completed, and now we can move on to the very next appointment. Uh, it looks like that was actually the last one for the day, but if there was another set of appointments after this, we could just select those and keep, keep on with our day. So it's that easy to be able to be navigated to whatever job site we've been dispatched out to go visit, uh, and then flip right over into a checklist with or without internet connectivity, fill out the checklist, make sure that the job gets done correctly, save all the information back to Salesforce, uh, and then we're good to go. So that's kind of what it looks like from a mobile experience. But I'm going to actually going to go back into Salesforce. And you can already see here that that appliance repair, the status has been changed from the field. That was a, as a result of our field service mobile status flipping. Uh, but when we dig in here, we can actually go into the work order itself um, and open it up. And as soon as we do, we can see all the changes that were made. So for example, um, we can see that John's phone number was actually changed. If we remember, we changed this phone number while we were, it was the, one of the first things that we did on site. So now that phone number has been updated as well as you can actually see the entire form and all the discoveries that were generated as a result of that particular visit. So if anybody needs to go back in and inspect this uh, work order and just verify that everything checks out and that things look good, that's what we can do here by just opening up the exact same form that was filled out while we were on site. Uh, and every single answer to every question is available to us here, including the photographs that were taken in field in the field. So it's very, very helpful on a single work order basis, but it's also helpful to just kind of roll this stuff up into a single dashboard. So we go to our field service dashboard. Obviously, as we're changing all these data points in the field, we're switching statuses of work orders, we're addressing new service appointments, we're re, uh, kind of shuffling re, uh, service resource schedules, all these things, completing work in the field successfully, unsuccessfully, maybe we're rescheduling appointments, all that stuff is able to kind of be observed here in dashboard format, and all the form data can be made available here as well. So it's extremely powerful if you have a large, particularly a large field service organization, all the data kind of just makes its way back to those who are making important decisions in a very digestible format. So I'm gonna stop the demo here, you guys. That This has been kind of what it looks like if you were to use Field Service Lightning and as well as Eureka uh, to both handle the use case of kind of going out, doing these quick break fixes, and making sure that we're getting the job done correctly the very first time. So if you have any questions about Eureka, you can feel free to give us a call or visit us at eureka.io to learn more.